Hey, so first of all, I applaud your efforts to be like Marie Curie, but also she died from her science. So maybe pick a scientist who didn't die from their science to emulate. Just just saying. Um, as Emily asked earlier, yes, I am wearing a cape. It was left by a former couch surfer. It's very exciting. And it has a hood with a pom-pom because I'm awesome. This is Emily, by the way. Emily, say hi. Hi. Emily's a uh, temple theater friend who is living in China, learning Chinese, which is conveniently on the same side of the world as I'm on now. It was, it was very well planned on both of our parts. Did this on purpose. Yeah. Yep. Go team. Just to be together. Just to be together. Um, okay, let me think. I was going to tell you something, and I don't remember what. Oh, I was going to tell you about a the conversations I had today with my students um okay so first of all i have four students um e is out the rest of the week sick um so that'll be fun uh k is a slow and reasonably tidy eater a is a fast and reasonably tidy eater j is the most untidy consumer of food i have ever met I mean, the kid could end up sitting on his rice. He, when we finish lunch, there's no question about where he sat because it's covered in food. I mean, covered. So today I was eating my spaghetti in a bowl with a fork, a fork, not chopsticks. And I got a little bit of Parmesan on the table. So A is like, oh, Tomar teacher, you are a messy teacher. And then J jumps in with, yes, Tomar teacher is messiest panda. And I was like, really? Really? (laughs) You're saying this? Uh, I said, Jay, I think you are messy as Panda. And he said, no, today I am clean Panda. At which point he got a black bean sauce on his shirt and had to get up for a tissue. Um, And that was only the first of many, many incidents. While cleaning up his tray, he spilled food absolutely everywhere. Um... And as J teacher was cleaning him up, she was like, you are not allowed to tell Tamar teacher she is messy teacher. <laughs> like, no, you're just the most untidy. Um, but it's, it's just like sometimes he seems to forget where his mouth is. Uh, and I would suspect it's a sign of a worse, I don't know what, except other than that, his fine motor skills are great. He just can't food. Um, so that was conversation one. Here was conversation two, which I am also recounting for the benefit of Emily. Um, So we've this whole week been learning about space, right? So today during theme time, we're in the theme room finishing our, um, which is decorated with like all the planets and all kinds of space stuff. And we're finishing our, our space books. Sorry, plugging in my phone. Um, And the kids are like, oh, are there aliens? And I'm like, well, we don't know. And they're like, so then on each planet we talk about, they're like, well, are there aliens here? And I'm explaining that of the planets that we're learning about, uh, the only one that people can live on is Earth. Uh, and that mostly goes over okay. They're like, oh, okay, so no pla- no aliens Jupiter, no aliens Saturn? I'm like, no. They're like, oh, okay. Um, and then A proceeds to tell me about aliens he saw in, or he, that there are aliens in Africa. And I'm like, uh, we call them Africans, actually. <laughs> there, are, there are no aliens in Africa. And he's describing them. And he's like, and they have here, and they have here, and they have, and he's making X shapes across his face. And I'm just like, I don't know what you're seeing. I just don't know. And I'm just like, there are no aliens in Africa. Like, I don't read the news regularly, but I definitely would know if there were aliens in Africa. And there aren't. There just aren't. So he's telling us that he read this in a book. And then he said something in Korean or maybe, I don't know if he was reminding the others of a, of what book it was or what TV show he saw. I don't know. But then Kay and Jay jump in and are also talking about the aliens in Africa and describing them to me um, because they were in a book. And so it must be true. So then we have a talk about how some books are true and some books are pretend stories uh, and J and K realize that because they their reading is advanced that they've read 
those kinds of, they've read fiction books and been like, ah, oh, yeah, totally not true. Like, click, clack, moo. They're like, yeah, cows typing, no. Um, but A is still on, like, realistic fiction books and refused to believe. He just, like, he was like, no, I saw it in a book. And I'm like, okay, can you bring the book? And we established that, yes, he would bring it on Monday. And then they're all worried because the book is in Korean. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure I can either ask a Korean about it or look at the pictures. Um, so, yeah, one of my one of my students is convinced that there are aliens living in Africa. Um, as I was considering this later, it occurs to me that perhaps he saw National Geographic and what he was describing as aliens might just be uh, tribal Africans with, like, tattoos or the elongated necks with the rings or the, you know, mud-colored, mud-covered dreadlocks could look like tentacles if you've never seen dreadlocks, which Asians don't really do dreads. So I could see that could be a thing. I'm, I will update as warranted, but I will be very amused if he walks in with, like, a National Geographic on Monday. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, I'm at past six minutes and uh, that's about all I got for you. Tomorrow is the dentist and hopefully the clinic. And then um, Emily and I are doing a Korean barbecue with Tasha, which is going to be awesome. And a uh, Korean spa. Yes, we're going to make an effort to a Jim Jobong. That is, that is on our to-do list. <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah. Love you. Bye.